How you doing folks? Ross here again. Um, this is day two of the Lister D project. Literally it is the day after the last video I took. Um, I'm taking the opportunity to do a little bit more on it. My main mission today is to get the magneto working. So we're literally going to be just focusing on this part here. Okay, so this is the magneto. The idea behind these basically is that it's essentially a self-contained ignition system and it generates the electricity required to make the spark itself rather than say with an ignition coil which requires a 12 volt input in order to amplify that uh, voltage to create the spark uh, to create the voltage necessary to jump the gap in the spark plug so what we need to do is find out what is happening or not happening inside this now unfortunately the uh, one of the common problems with these co with these magnetos is that the um, windings uh, fail inside the coil. Now if that's the case, unfortunately it's replacement time and I'm hoping that's not the case because they're quite expensive. But um, first of all, of course, we're gonna see if we can get it working. Um, and I'm gonna do some measurements and checks, clean up all the contacts inside and we'll take the condenser out as well too and have a look at that. So um, yeah, let's keep going anyway. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to change that HT lead because that's obviously the one that came on the engine and it's a bit crusty looking. I was hoping it was going to work, but it's just one of many failure points on this. So we're going to, um, I have a set of uh, Volkswagen Beetle HT leads and I'm going to cut them up and uh, use them. So let's see if we get on there. So here's the lid back off again, and what I did was I loosened that screw there okay so that actually holds the wire in place the, the HT lead you can see that the uh, wire inside is folded over so what we'll do is we'll try and do that on the new HT lead so um, I mean the, the conductor doesn't seem to be broken in this so to be honest with you although it does look very the rubbers all perished I don't actually think that that is the problem but you know I mean we have to kind of work our way backwards here so that's kind of part of the process my parts washer is a basin of geyser with a paintbrush in it. Simple but effective. Um, and then I have a bucket of water behind just for rinsing things off. So I gave this a bit of a clean up just in the geyser. It still, it still doesn't look perfect, but when I'm properly rebuilding the engine, we'll um, give it a coat of satin black and it'll look grand. Um, so what I also did as well too was the little screw, where's it gone? Here it is. That holds the HT lead in place has got a spike on it okay now that has to make contact with the wire and I've cleaned it up um, and yeah it's just a case now of pushing the HT lead into the the hole and um, I have the HT lead stripped back like this and the screw will go through all of those wires and down into the conductor in the center so um should make a good uh, proper connection we'll check it with a meter after we have it done as well to see how uh, see what sort of resistance we're getting on it i'd be looking for pretty much none the next thing i'm going to do is take out these four screws and lift this out and then the condenser here i'm assuming that's the condenser i don't see anything else that would fit that description um there's a screw there so let's pop them out and we'll get everything to clean inside as well to make sure it's all uh, all the connections are all nice and fresh and um, if there's anything that needs to be lubricated we can do that in the process as well too. Now uh, I don't expect that those screws are going to come out easily but we'll see what happens. I might take the tank straps out of the way as well too, they're kind of in an awkward place. No, proper screwdriver now. Well, I'm, gonna, I'm only going to end up stripping the heads off those screws otherwise. I think the impact screwdriver is the right job here now. I have the coil out of the magneto now and it's looking very sorry for itself. There's a lot of corrosion on that and the connectors are corroded and worse than that is the state of the housing. That's all going to need a thorough cleaning. So I think we may set about restoring the uh, magneto as best we can. There's going to be a bit of work involved in this alone. Okay, so that's looking a bit cleaner there now. Um, I just kind of gave everything a bit of a Rolled with a bit of emery, uh, or a light cleaning, didn't go too mad on it. When it comes to the full restoration, we will do that then, but uh, for the moment, I think that's pretty good. Um, cleaned up the connections on the condenser here as well too, so that should uh, work nicely. It's very corroded actually, so 
hardly surprising it wasn't working. Same situation with the coil. That's all nice and shiny there. The connections are pretty good as well too. So uh, I think at this point in time what I'm going to do is I'm going to just put it back together again and see how we get on. And if not, I think what I might have to do is put a magneto on my uh, parts list, which I really don't want to have to do. But the, to get them rewound is stupid money. Um, it's like £75, so about €85, €90 euro and give or take at the moment. Um, so I don't really want to spend that because it dips into the budget for the engine. Um, but uh, there are other alternatives, there's other types of um, uh, magnetos. Incidentally, um, uh, pit, uh, aircraft piston engines often use magnetos even nowadays um, because they are a self-contained ignition system. I mean, obviously it's a four-cylinder version or a six-cylinder version, whatever type engine the aircraft has. But uh, even the um, VW air-cooled engines that are converted to uh, be used in aircraft would often run a magneto instead of uh, the um, uh, normal points and uh, distributor sort of setup. Um, I think uh, Unison make the magnetos for aircraft a lot of the time and I would often see uh, Unison ignition systems in use on um, uh, small gas turbine engines. So uh, you know they, they do kind of get around a bit. But um, anyway we'll uh, start putting this back together again. Okay, so I have everything back together again, um, with the new HT lead and all that, uh, and um, still no spark, unfortunately. Now, what I did do just there was I checked to see if both sides of the points are grounded while they're open, and they are, so that would indicate a potential problem there. Um, so I need to trace that back now and see why that's happening. I think it could be maybe just the way they're installed or something like that. So what I might do is just take them out and have a look and see if there's any proper insulation around them. Well, folks, I'm afraid it's not looking good for this magneto. Um, I think the coil is, uh, has had it. There's no resistance between here and here at all. It's an open line. So um, there should be... Uh, a couple of ohms maybe I mean because that's apparently where the uh, where the coil hurts so uh, I'm getting nothing there um, and uh, I'm also getting I think actually what's happened is the uh, uh, inside of the coil is shorted the ground somewhere and uh, it's just not connected to that at all so I think at this point in time we're gonna to have to look for a new coil which is uh, or a new magneto which is unfortunate because they're pricey enough and I didn't want to have to go down the route of changing one, but I'm going to have a look at a few alternatives. I mean, I, I'm not overly fussed about keeping the original magneto on the engine. I mean, what I want is for the engine to work and to look the part, but, uh, you know, I mean, for, like, if this is going to hold it up and that uh, coil is going to cost me a fortune to put right, then, um, yeah, I think we'll, uh, we'll just have to come up with an alternative. But uh, anyway, I think we'll leave it there for this uh, for this video and um, pick it back up when I start picking up a few parts. As I said, the intention at this point is still to get the engine to run as it is, first of all. Um, I've ordered a compression tester as well. I don't actually have one at the moment. I've never needed one before this point. Um, so when that arrives, we'll do a compression test on it and see if we're getting any compression. And if we're not, well, then it's probably a bit of a futile exercise to go any further uh, without taking the head off and seeing what's going on there. Um, and then I'm kind of basically into the rebuild then. But, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And um, please leave any comments. I'll try to uh, respond to them as quickly as I can. Um, and thanks very much for watching.